is meant for an adult audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Mm, listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. No guest tonight. The guest tonight is who, Drew? The love that exists between us. <laughs> between Greg Brady and you. That's right. Let me ask you a uh, hypothetical, Drew. Yeah. I'm going to try to work some of these out tonight. Right. I was talking about at the office. Right. What guy would you rather drive cross country with? The guy who sports the leather fanny pack or the guy who pulls his ponytail through the gap in the back of his baseball cap. The ponytail guy. Well, ponytail same guy, guy. Same guy. It is the same guy. What are you talking about? Uh, it's, they're, they're marginally the different. The ponytail guy could be, yeah, it's The fanny tolerable. pack guy could have some weed on him. That's, and for you, that's a plus. Right. The it's ponytail guy's going to talk a lot about... Ponytail guy could be into sports and cars. He, he could be, but if he could is, be. you're just going to get an earful... Of his stuff. Of his yeah, stuff. I understand, but at least it's... Fanny pack guy may get stoned and pass out at some point. Ooh, good point. Good point. Ooh, and I could, could, be, I could treat him, get him some variety. Yeah. But keep in mind, fanny pack guy's also going to be nylon dolphin short guy with the nutsack hanging out. No. You're going ponytail, ponytail guy? guy? I See, I go fanny pack guy. Yeah. That, that, that's me. Well, that's why we're opposites. All right. Would you rather... Okay, here's another. This is, this is a hypothetical. But yeah. this, is, this is just sort of... Uh, don't answer this. Right, just right. let it... Uh, just <laughs> absorb, absorb it. Absorb it. <laughs> Drive cross, cross country with a guy who, uh, is, uh, n- who uh, cannot stop playing God or a guy who frequently takes the law into his own hands. Just, just, it, just, let, it, just let it. Just let it steep. Okay. You got an answer? Can you describe to me the guy who keeps playing God a little bit? What that? I don't quite. I, I don't know. I got I a clear picture means. of the guy who, who who takes law in his own hands, and I don't like him. Okay, the guy plays God could be a couple different guys. Yeah, could be. I'll go with the guy. I get some choices. I think All right. Well, as a, as a doctor, you've been known to play God. Yeah, and so and so my peers have, and they're okay. All right. Marissa. Hi. You're 18. What's Ooh. happening? Well, okay. I think I'm pretty messed up when it comes to sex, right? Because I swear to God, I cannot come unless my legs are straight and they're like flexed and it's retarded and it's really embarrassing when I'm like, I need to be on, you know? Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's all I hear is abuse. I hear three year old. Yeah, three, three. three year old. Oh were, you sex- no. were, you, were you sexually abused? Never. No, Never. Never. How tall Never. are you? I'm 5'5. Five, five. Oh. I still hear it. That's rangy for someone with your uh, impish little voice. I know. I sound like I'm three. The guy who answered the phone is making fun of me. Yeah. That's what happened? Does nothing happen when you were three? Nobody Never, died? Never, ever. You're 25 <laughs> and you sound like you're three. Oh, you're, you're 18 and you sound like you're three. Brian's, 20, Brian's 23 and he's bald, though. So you can always, <laughs> if, he's, if he makes fun of you, you just shoot back with that. All right. Baldy. So you have the Corolla syndrome. <laughs> what? Right, the leg lock and leg thing. Uh, you know what? I'm past that. I'm versatile oh. now. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Well, so help, get her through it. Ever get since it. we started flying a lot, I realized yeah. we're going to have to learn to beat off standing up. <laughs> get her through it. Because some of those flights are up to six hours. I understand that. <laughs> get her through it. Uh, all right. You see, you can only come when she uh, flexes. And like, also, okay, this is, yeah. I think, even more messed up. I, some, like, if I really want to enjoy myself, I have to make my boyfriend, like, rate me. Like, it's so sad. That's what I'm All talking right. about. What, well, what do you mean you're talking about? I was talking about. Marissa, what happened? Come Some on. Something happened. I know. I swear to you, like, on my life, nothing has ever happened to me. I'm just, like, sick in my head. I don't know what is the matter with me. Something happened. You don't no, maybe I mean, don't remember it? It happens once in a while. Somebody's a little perverse, perverted. Well, what else are you sick in the head about? What happened? Are you able to have relationships? Oh, stable? yeah. No, I've been with my boyfriend for, like, two over two years. What's your relationship with your family like? Um, my, my mom and my real dad divorced when I was really little, and then like, my mom... Like, uh, hang on. You real dad divorced when you were how old? Uh, I, I think I was actually, like, one and a half when their divorce was final. And right. why did she, why did he leave? 
Um, well, my mom and dad were, like, I think 19 when they got married, and it just, like, wasn't working out. I seriously don't remember anything, because I was, I was it, really does, little, you know? That's your mom. Not true, but listen, you always ask us why, 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 and no, the because, answer, first off, yeah, she's one and a half. What do you think? She had a steno pad? Yeah, but if she says, uh, mom had enough when she found dad's face, and, you know, I was two-year-old, and he found dad, you know, that's when she left, grabbed me and left. Oh, my well, God, no, my dad has so many other kids and stuff, and they're fine, like... He'd never do anything like that. Come on, give me a hug. Yeah. It's, it's so many other kids. Your biological father? Yeah, my biological dad. So Dude. you still have a relationship with him? Um. Well, he lives in another state now, but he he has like other kids, and he's fun. I just I don't go visit him and stuff just because like I'm in California and it's too yeah. much of a hassle. And it wasn't though she said he left because he was beating the crap out of me or he was drinking. No, she drugs. actually left because he spends money like so much. And my mom is Korean, mm -hmm. so she's the most materialistic person in the world. Ooh. So. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. And wait a minute. Koreans aren't materialistic. Oh my God, they're angry, women. though. They're, they're mean so people. They're angry. They're violent. Yeah. Well, well, listen. Wait I a like minute. them because during the riots, they're up on the roof with the gun shooting at all I the looters. I convenience stores. Wait, sure. she just, she just said their, pro their property. Your mom is violent? <laughs> no, I'm just, no. She's just an angry woman, but she's... Did she, did she ever hit you? No, she's just, she's just... She's like, angry. She's Asian, dude. Listen, you Asian, can't you know? judge. It's a culture. <laughs> hey, bye, bye. What, you, uh, come on. I right, get in trouble again look, here? I, who cares? Hey, listen, Marissa. Yeah. Uh, the idea that you're having an orgasm at 18 is, means it's you're good. ahead of the yeah, game. Yeah, you're ahead of the game. That's right. Yeah. All right? Most ancient women can't do that. All right. And if you want to uh, break yourself of this, then masturbate in different positions and get but your body used to it. I'll be doing it for like an hour and I'll just be like, I'm so tired of this. All right. Well, again, 18. Cry me a river, sweetie. Mm -hmm. You're 18. You're having orgasms. You That's got a your boyfriend of two years. You're doing yeah, fine. That's right. By the way, it's just it's got to kill these uh, little girls to have the uh, daddies who go start other families uh, across the country. And, uh, yeah, well, he's around. Well, no, he's got, no, he's got his new wife and his other kids to look yeah. out now. This is a, that's a, I mean, better the guy just buy it in a motorcycle accident right. or be in the joint or something. I mean, in, in a weird, subtle way. Yeah, you can idealize him. Isn't then. the greatest form of abuse just the, uh, well, he's got a new family now, and oh, yeah. uh, he's out in uh, Florida. And, mm -hmm. uh, he, he did send me a card two years ago. Right. But I mean, that's like, that's uh, he's alive, he's doing fine. There is some other children he's showering some he love and attention to. Doesn't he doesn't know just, me. That's horrible. I'm just on the island of uh, Misfit Toys. <laughs> yeah. That's great. That's God bless you. I, I don't understand how these guys sleep at night. I know. I, it's just, uh, it's yeah, just denial. They're, it's not, somewhere it's narcissism. They're not there. It's not them. So that's it. They're fine. All right. Well, they seem fine. Look at her. She's great. She's doing Beautiful great. girl. Oh, yeah. She's a boyfriend. Wow. Yeah. What's her name? Mandy? No, no. Mar uh, Marissa. Marissa. She's between 18 and 24. She's living now somewhere in the Southern California area. She's doing great. She's doing great. I think she's doing okay. Kyle? Yeah. You're 22? I sure am. What's up? Oh, I got a Prince Albert uh, about three and a half months ago, and it was mm -hmm. all great and everything. It healed up real quick, and uh, then, like, now, like, my sex drive has gone down way, way, way down. Like, it's, like, no big deal. I'll masturbate every once in a while, but, you know, if I get sex, it's cool. If I don't, it's cool. Whereas before, uh, uh, I was all what, like... Why are we, why are we, why are we surprised yes. in taking these hair-thin needles and putting them behind our ear... And back pain goes away, or we feel elated. Right. And you take a spear and jam it through your swans, it would change your sexual drive. What? What? Are we surprised? No, you're 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 talking about uh, acupuncture. Right. Drew, let me ask you a hypothetical. Yeah. The guy driving would, cross yeah. country, cross country with a guy. Ample Ang or Prince Albert? <laughs> ample, ample Ang, Prince Albert. No, two nipple piercings uh -huh. and a Prince Albert, uh -huh. or a guy. Who, when he's talking to women, refers to them as dude. Like when a girl's uh, talking, I'll take dude, him. dude, 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 seriously. I know who he is. I'll take him. You over take the, the over dude the piercing guy? guy? Over the piercing guy? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We may, you may be over two, Drew. Well, I sh it makes sense. I'd be picking the opposite of you, but right? You, really, you realize the guy's going to call you dude 33,000 times between here and New York. I'll just hear aloha. All right. Let's, uh, where are we talking to? Kyler? What's his mm -hmm. prom? No sex drive after Prince Albert. Oh, okay. hey, everything's healed up. Yeah, everything's totally fine. The only other relation to it that I can think of is I've been sober for five and a half months now, whereas From? before I was a raging alcoholic. So alcohol. Um, anything you're, any medication you're taking? Nope. 
Okay. Don't do drugs. Never done drugs in my yeah, life. Yeah, there can drugs. definitely be a lot of fluctuation in your sex drive in the first year of sobriety, and it may be some of that. Uh, I, I would tend to think, I, I've definitely heard of people complaining about changes in their sex drive after a big piercing. Mm, so, yeah. and it wouldn't surprise me, again, somebody coming at you with a giant spear. Well, what if we just said that you, you got, you know, a guy called up and he said, uh, uh, yeah, I work in a, a plant and uh, a couple weeks back I got my uh, dick caught in the uh, mechanism of a forklift and uh, it didn't tear it off, but it was bleeding and I had to pack it with ice. And uh, by the way, I'm having some erectile difficulty. I don't, I'm not interested in sex right now. Yeah, like, yeah. you'd be like, well, Jesus, buddy, you just uh, got your dick caught in a forklift. Of course, same thing here. I, I, I've said this once, I'll say it again. I spend the, the better part of each day keeping sharp things away from my penis. In fact, sort of cringing with your penis. I sleep... Your, your, your penis cringes I when I sleep with my, things, right? with my uh, junk and Tupperware. Of course. I, I use one of those uh, crispers. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Tupperware, the round one, and I strap it around. I uh, use a bungee cord, and that's how I that's how sleep. I sleep. I yeah, because it could be an earthquake. And, yeah. yeah. I, I burp it in the morning. Oh, boy, what comes out? Not great. But uh, Towel comes first, though. I, I do. I, I zip. I don't wear underpants a lot. And so when I zip my fly up, I oh, do it yeah. very gingerly. Yeah, yeah. But as all I do is think about what <laughs> could hit my penis. And the idea that what you What have you decided follow- could? Uh, any cars, meteors, meteors. Well, you don't know asteroids, yeah, debris, yeah. blue ice, pieces of space shuttle. It, it it's it's infinite. That's why I sleep on my stomach. By the way, with that big Tupperware thing sticking up, it's difficult, but oh, I man. do. Yeah, yeah. The point is, is to, to voluntarily have that hook. And, and Drew and I have seen this thing. It's a uh, it's a, a decent sized gauged hook. It's uh, not as not as thin You're as piano about the, wire. The spear. Yeah, yeah. It, go, it's go it's, into it that. is a. It's got to be like a 14-gauger. Plus, I think, you know how when you put your finger in your mouth, but you don't touch anything, you can feel your finger in your mouth Mm -hmm. and you start to gag? Mm -hmm. We've talked about this before. I have the same thing with my urethra. Mm -hmm. If you try to feed something down my urethra, even even if it doesn't hit the side, I'll throw up on (laughs) you. Or my, my penis will vomit, and that's even worse. Which, that's just a euphemism, come on. The, the point is, I, I couldn't, um, I, and there's no anesthetic. Yeah, Which, for, I know. for me, if there was ever a time, you know, like, I, I don't like getting my teeth clean without a little nitrous shot. You know, I mean, if you got a filling, even if it, even if it was a, a smallish filling, mm-hmm. you'd say, oh, no, no, give me the shot. Yep. Definitely, I don't mm-hmm. want to deal with this. The idea that the, the paint, the, 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 no that, anesthetic, it would just be pierced. That's part of the thing. That's part of the uh, rush they get. I, I, I know, and I know it's 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 commonplace and it's accepted. <sighs> but if you pull it out of all that, and this yeah, is no, why I, you got to get high on mushrooms, yeah. because when you get high on mushrooms, whoosh, it's all pulled away now. <laughs> There's none of oh, everyone's doing it. There's just these guys are getting these thick gauge hooks put through their penis with no anesthetic. And here's the here, here's the topper. They're not doing it on a bet. They're paying yeah. for the privilege. Of having the stone guys covered with tats, who just got out of the joint, put the uh, put the the hook through the joint. Nice. All right. Uh, that's, call me old fashioned. I just if I hear somebody's done that, I think there's something wrong with them. Mm-hmm. Of course. Kelly. Hello. I still drive cross country with that guy rather than the guy who calls women dude, especially when they're interrupting and making a point. So anyway, I was like, no, no, dude, dude, dude. That's the guy. Like yeah. That. Kelly? Yeah? You're 14? Yeah. You having sex with a 16-year-old guy? Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> yeah? Uh, I guess not. <laughs> what grade are you in? Eighth. Eighth grade. Uh, and uh, what grade is he in? He's Eleven. in tenth. 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 Yeah. Eighth and tenth. Yeah. All right. That's so. too much. So, yeah, eighth and ninth is too much. Eighth that's and a big. That's a big gap. Eighth and ninth. It's a big year. <laughs> it is. <laughs> True. Developmentally, standard. really, yeah. sixteen is sort of the threshold. That's where you're sort of the, the cement's right. starting to dry a little bit. Okay. So, uh, what's uh, what's the question? Okay. Well, like, it's not really like a boyfriend girlfriend relationship or nothing. Why not? Well. It's just kind of like a sexual relation right now. No. Not right now. It's that way, I guess, for good, right? Well, he doesn't. Well, that he, do, he doesn't want a girlfriend. 
Well, I don't know if he wants to go out with me or not, but I was going to ask if he would think it was a good idea to go out with him. This is, this is why 14 year old no. should not be sleeping yeah. with a 16-year-old. You see that thinking? Yes. That's not... The, that's not the same brain as the 16-year-old's brain. He is just having sex, and that's where it stops. Yeah. Well, he's, like, said that he likes me and stuff like that, and we've known each other for a long time, but, yeah. like, yeah. I well, why, why, why isn't he your boyfriend? And why wouldn't you insist that somebody you're having sex with would be your boyfriend? Well, I was going out with his cousin. Oh. That explains it. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, I knew him first, but then I started going out with his cousin. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I cheated on his cousin with another guy. Right. Mm -mm. And then we kind of broke up Kelly? for a while. No. Hey, Kelly. Yeah. Dad's gone. Dad's out. I'm, I'm looking down the road, and it's a, it's a very rocky one for you. I'm not seeing a good future. I have a crystal ball here. It's not a great... You're, you're going to get into trouble. You're going to get pregnant. Somebody's going to beat on you. You're going to drop out of high school. God forbid you end up in junior college. It's going to be a disaster. What are you using for protection now? Well, I'm on the pill, and also we use condoms. That's good. Well, that's good. really? All right. Yeah. What, uh, on the pill? It's a strange combination of responsible and irresponsible. Yeah. All right, so, Kelly. Mm hmm If the guy says, you, you tell the guy, look, uh, we're not just having casual sex. Uh, if he wants to commit to a relationship, that's something you can talk about. And all the talk in the world doesn't mean anything. Yeah. He's got to commit to a relationship. Yeah, which he will not do. I'm and that's why Kelly won't. doesn't bring it up. All right. And, and if he won't, that's fine. You're 14. You're in the eighth grade. Get rid of the guy. What's so, uh, let me tell you guys about being an adult. It's not great. You, you got to pay for car insurance and uh, go to the dentist. And uh, you start growing hair in your ears. Colonoscopies. You get colonoscopies. Don't worry about it. You're in the eighth grade. You join the uh, junior varsity uh, drill team or something and uh, start acting like an eighth grader. What's the big rush? Well, the dad issue. All right, where's your dad? Uh, he lives with my stepmom, and uh, he doesn't live too far away, but... Does he have another family? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Does he pay attention to you? Yeah, but he's kind of like given up on me, I right. guess, because I just moved in with my mom and stuff like that. Right. You getting into trouble? No. I used to be in a lot of trouble, but I'm trying Why do you to do that? now. Why do you what? do that? Oh, what? well, I got mixed up with a lot of people that I shouldn't have. All right. Well, stop it. And listen, if the guy wants to be your boyfriend, fine. If not, you're done with him. He's okay. another guy you're mixed up with that you shouldn't be with. Right. Find Jesus Christ. <laughs> You're calling from Texas? Yeah. He's there. He's he's there or he's been there recently or I could I could pull up his tour dates. I think he's he's yeah, he's gonna be in Abilene coming up soon. You around the panhandle? No, I'm in Fort Worth. Smoking cigarettes? Yeah. She's smoking right now <laughs> into the phone fourteen. <laughs> Kelly. Huh? Now, what's going on there, baby doll? Come on now. You're 14. You're in the goddamn eighth grade. Just stop it, would you? What's your mom like? Yeah. Uh, she's cool. Uh, she, yeah, she smoked pot with you and that kind of thing? She works at the Waffle House. Waffle House. I've, I didn't know humans worked there. I thought it was all automated, too. I, I thought it was some sort of surreal, you know, parallel <laughs> universe. I thought, here's what I really thought about, like, the Waffle House. I just thought those places were put up is jokes right. for the rest of the country and that we all sort of paid f right. for them through like comedians and everything. So, so, you know, you got to have your waffle houses so right. they can, so you can p have punchlines for your jokes. Every comedy club, a certain percentage of the take every night goes out to the sustain the waffle, waffle houses. houses. Yeah. 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 All right. All right, Kelly. I don't know. Quit smoking. Uh, you're not supposed to be smoking and taking the birth control, are you? At, at four, you're not supposed to. Yeah, it's but not at a 14. Good day. 14, not a big deal. Uh, so much so as if she were in her 20s, late 20s, 30s. All right. I like the way it's like, yeah, whatever. <sighs> <laughs> what? Kara? Yeah? You're 24? Yeah. What's up? Um, I had a question for Dr. Drew about diet pills. I don't know if you know much about them. I wanted to know if, like, any are good. You always hear bad things about them, but... You're fat. True, please. <laughs> Why do you want to take diet pills? They're all basically they're all amphetamines. They're just speed. Um, actually, because 
that's the only thing that works quick. Yeah. So you have an eating disorder. I, I guess so. What about this ephedra they're going to ban? Thank God. Well, I, there's really? some without that. So are there any that are okay? No, no. We'll, let, we'll get it in a second. But I, P P I, I, like love, I P love the way people yeah. approach ephedra, which people have died as a result of taking ephedra and it being, you know, exerting themselves physically. First of all, then they blame the people for exerting themselves on the ephedra. They want to compare ephedra to, how about caffeine? Right. Never, never heard anybody in the history of humanity. Multiple people, dozens have died from this stuff. Mm -hmm. We've no had caffeine. We've had three deaths. What about the original Juan Valdez? We have still around. Is he? I said the uh, original. Hey, I, the that's Juan what I'm Val saying. Caffeine. Looks at Juan Valdez are like lassies. <laughs> There's like thirty of these Mexican guys. They just as long as you fit the suit, you get to be the new Juan Valdez. <laughs> the first guy did OD on caffeine. Drink. Resulin, which is a medication to treat diabetes, was an excellent medicine. There were it saved thousands of lives. There were three deaths. Uh, taken on the market immediately. Right. And, and vilified. And yet it was something that saved people. Ephedra has no health benefit. Listen, uh, there is a medicine called Topamax that is off-label use for uh, dietary suppression. They're tr I think they're going to try someday to get it as an appetite suppressant, but it does work. But you'd have to be prescribed by doctors used to using that medication. Beyond right. that, it's exercise every day, see a dietitian, get a regular healthy diet going. All right. So listen, Carrie, you're 24. No rapid weight no loss. No free lunches. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, are, is it like any other thing where you shouldn't mix them? Like, if you mix two different kinds, is two, that two like two kinds cool? of uh, diet pills? Yeah. You talking about over the counter diet pills? Yeah. Well, uh, what? Look, what's wrong with you just uh, doing a little exercise and uh, watching the carbs? Every time I do that, it just it it. I don't know because I've done this for so long. I guess that then when I do that, it's All right. like you, I well, look, you, you, you're a Fedra addicted. The Fedra creates an addictive disorder. Well, let me ask you this about diet pills: Do they suppress appetite or do they burn calories? They suppress appetite. They don't burn anything. No, no. They burn well, as much a as a cup bit. of coffee does, right, right? Right. So I mean, you're not taking this pill and melting away the pounds. No, you're, not you're taking this pill. You're getting sped up and you're losing your appetite. Yeah. So if you just sort of take the melt away pounds equation or, or uh, aspect of it out of the equation, then you're just left with willpower, which exactly. is basically don't take the pill oh. and don't eat. Or exercise a little more. Right. And or balance your diet properly. And ephedra is an addictive compound. You have to take a lot of it to get addicted to it, but it is a precursor for amphetamine. Drew, what about this? I was thinking about this today because, uh, you know, I like the food and you like the food mm. too, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what, I, I don't know, what controls the food part? Is, is it, it's it, it, it's your taste buds. Are they well, connected to your brain? Right, let's let's come back and talk your, about this because it's a very interesting. I was talking to somebody a bit over at E Diets about this today. It's very interesting. Ugh. No one is addressing it. Where the path you're going down right now, no one is talking about. Because it. I'll tell you my plan. Yeah, and then we'll go to break. Small chip implanted in the in the upper palate. Right. There, right now, everything that in and you dot now that's hardwired into a, a part in your brain. And then you just dial it in for pizza or hoagie or you grinder. It. That's it. And I just I, I subsist off a a, a kelp based <laughs> mulch. <laughs> and I just like soil and liquid cream. bass and kelp. Yeah, just yeah. just liquid bass and kelp. And and meanwhile, I'm I'm just shoving kelp down my throat and it's going off as hot fudge Sunday. Mm. Hell, maybe cocaine. Yeah. You know, we're forget about food. We're getting into drugs now. Sure. Pot brownies, mushrooms. Right. You know, it's just. But but the flavor. Uh, let, let's get into this because, and I know texture plays a part in it too. And, and eating and biting and chewing does too. People, that's a gratifying thing, right? You were talking about meat and men. And I, you, you, yeah, you, I know because you do. You get the, the once in a while. These people get in a car accident. They get their jaw wired shut, and you see them putting a cheeseburger in the blender, and it's like, oh, no. gross. That is gross. Ooh. But think about it. After a month of uh, just uh, eating swirlies, mm. you'd be you'd put a steak in the blender too, right? right? After you chomp on it a couple times, that's all you got anyway. All right, all right. All right let's take a break. But then, uh, Drew, you were talking to somebody at the uh, yeah, just having a conversation about wh why we have these tremendous diets out there, and there's tons of good things for people to choose amongst getting fatter. Okay. Why is that? All right, we'll be right back after this. Uh, oh yeah. Hey, everybody. 
Love line of Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. All right. Let me ask you a hypothetical, Drew. All right. I haven't done this one. In one nipple piercing and one sample. Done with that one. Okay. This is a true hypothetical. This right. is my favorite hypothetical. I right. came up with this about 10 years ago. And uh, we, I think we've mentioned on the air, but man, it has been at least five, seven years since I've mentioned this one on the air. Really? Everyone okay. just think about this. All right. Girls answer different than guys, but I can talk the girls into it, too. All right. All right everybody You're spooking me now. needs to picture... The most heinous person they either go to school with or work with. Right. That big fat chick at the office, scary, creepy guy with the hair on his back and the comb over and the uh, nugget gold watch who's always talking you up by the water machine, you know, that guy. The uh, the, the guy you sit behind in uh, chemistry class who's Why got the uh, ass favorite? crack with the lint in it and the, the love handle slopping over the Wrangler jeans. Just the worst skin. That Everybody works with somebody. Everyone works with one person they'd love to F and about 28 people they'd kill themselves <laughs> if they ever got near sexually. Okay, I want you to think of the worst of the worst. Okay. All right, school or work, wherever you happen to be. All right, now, Here's the hypothetical. Mm. Either, and there's a little magic involved with this, either you have to have a night of actual love with this person. And I don't mean a night. I don't mean four hours. But, I mean, you have to engage in intercourse with this person. You have to satisfy that person. You have to satisfy that person. Could be orally. It has to be intercourse. It has, you have to physically engage with them. Now, I'm not talking about 69ing. For 14 straight hours. I'm just talking about a sexual encounter with that person. And then when you're done, nobody knows. Not even the person. Right. Is, 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 it is magically Versus. erased from the brain. Versus you not having the sexual encounter. Yeah. And everybody at your school and or work Thinks thinking you did. you did. And there's nothing you can do to satisfy them. I know this is sort of your thing. I will take the latter. Thank you. You say that, and everybody says that, and women especially. See, guys go, look, I'll just crack a few beers, I'll shut the light, I'll get it over with in 15 minutes, I'll move on with my life. Right, that's what most guys are. And true, God knows, you've done your own versions of that to God knows how many candy stripers over the years. Strangely, my thing would be, though, I'd be worried that this person, here's the piece that you could add in that would make me go that direction you say we should go, which is whoever the person was you slept with is now into you. No, no. And expecting things from you. But listen, Jackoff, it is it is stricken from the no, from no, I mean, memory. No, I mean on the other, when, when, the, Forget when, about you, when you actually didn't do it. When they you don't didn't exist. Do it. They don't exist. I mean, what are you saying? I'm saying in the, in, the per, in, the, in the version where you actually don't do it and everyone thinks you did. Right. If you add in the person who you actually didn't do it with but thinks you did is now into you and pursuing you and hurt that you're not fo- following through. Now, now. You'll, you'll bang them. Now, the other way. Yeah, All right. No. Completely. All right. Forget about that component of it. Just the constant ridicule. I know you do that. You do that. You give me that. Oh, you're holier than thou. Head now. Now listen. I'm bigger than that. I'm, I'm more than that. I'm too evolved for that. No, I, I, and and this is what all women say, by the way, because for women, having the sexual encounter with the guys is a l- little more substantial than a guy sort of uh, doing what we've all done at one time or another. God knows, Drew's been there. God knows. But here's here because he's a man of supreme passion. But here's the here's the thing. When you start explaining, because I've done this with like producer Ann, they start walking in every meeting, every time somebody every time a coworker looks at you, there's elbowing, yeah. there's giggles at the company picnic, at the Christmas party. It never goes away. And as brutal as kids can be in a school environment, is as brutal, maybe more so, as it coworkers can be but in a you, work you remember, you have this thing about being singled out in a crowd. You it, hate that. True, true. Th- you would be brutalized. <laughs> you just would. Everyone would be laughing. And you got to picture somebody who is just uh, yeah. a holy mess. Yeah. I, you get it over with. Because th- this could go on for months, years. Ooh. Pop up anytime. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I think I think I have the sex. And I think, I think most people, if I worked on them hard enough and were honest enough, would do it too. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. But it is one of the true great uh, dilemmas and hypotheticals of our time. I, I know Aristotle worked on it for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan. Yes, I'm here. You uh, want to pierce both your nipples? 
Yeah, uh, I heard you guys talking earlier about uh, having the penis pierced and uh, that causing a major loss in sex drive. And I was, I'm just a little concerned on whether or not that's for piercings in general or if that was just uh, with, like, penis piercings. We think it's generally uh, hardware, metal placed through the actual sh penis. Yeah, it, uh, That's, uh, yeah. it doesn't seem to affect yeah. that many guys, but why monkey with that? I mean, what you got between your legs is somewhere between, it's like a cross between a gyroscope and a Steinway. <laughs> you know what I mean? You want to just throw a little sand on it and kick it? You want you want to uh, f with that? I'm pretty much, I'm so pretty much on your side with uh, putting the Tupperware and the bungee cord, and uh, okay. yeah, you protect that junk of yours. And now you want your nipples pierced? Yes, uh, I don't like that either. Uh, I, I'm going with that. It's a, it's a lot easier to let that close up after time than uh, going and getting another ten hour tattoo. Okay, yeah, well, get uh, okay, get remove. all right, get your nipples pierced, but. For Christ's Why sake. Why do any of that stuff? Just keep the goddamn shirt on, would you? Yeah, we and don't like not, seeing it. it it's, always, it's always weird when you're drawn to a man's nipples. Yeah. And you can't help it because you, you walk around, you're like a bass. You yeah, see something ouch. shiny. Yeah. And you know, well, what is that? Yeah. And the next thing you know, you're staring at a guy's nipples and you're like, I wonder that dude. And I think he's got, and oh. I wonder how long. And then you're like, what am I doing? Yeah. I'm staring at this guy's nipples. Yeah. Great. Hey, buddy, how about a little sack just to complete the trilogy? I got the two nipples. How about you show me your right ball so I can uh, go home and find it? <laughs> and by the way, what, is it really? I, I wouldn't mind seeing it. If you ask me, look, you want to see a guy's nut sack or you want to see his two pierced nipples? Nuts. I'd be, I'd give yeah. me the nuts. That's just one. I, well, I, I'm, I'm sort of into non uh, sort of violated body surfaces. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just, I'm so tired of seeing what everyone's done to themselves this week. I agree with I, you. I do, I do, I find it, a, I, I intrusive. find it intrusive. Intrusive, yeah. yes, because now I'm walking away thinking about your goddamn nipples. And that's what they want. And that's, that. yes, yeah. yes, you've, you've pissed off society and you've added uh, five minutes to my next jack session or possibly shortened it. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but, all right. So, 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 go, go get 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 whatever you want done to you, but just put keep your stupid shirt on, would you? Yeah. All right. Let's uh, talk to Justin. Is eighteen, Justin? Yeah, I got a Jeremy in Florida. All right, let's hear it. All right, a child swimming in a river drowned because the onlookers refused to help until the father raised the rescue price. Germany or Florida? Mm. Rescue price? Yeah, the or the bribe. Uh, that that just sounds. That sounds folklorish. That sounds wives' tale-ish. That's not true. Oh, it's, it's true, a, man. No, there's some I read little. Art, boys. Listen, there's some little kid who's drowning out in a lake. There's a bunch of onlookers that are standing around. The kid's drowning. The father is what confined to an anchor. No, Why can't he go? I guess I don't know. Yeah. See, see here's the thing about all these uh, stupid wives' tale things. If they don't make sense, they don't make sense. There's 10 people standing around with their arms crossed, go, kids drowning, De father can't swim. Uh, how much for the reward? First off, how's the, how's the uh, reward even come up? Right. Secondly, uh, 500 Deutschmarks. Ah, oh, that is not enough. Wait a minute, I said Deutschmark. That could be Germany. It's showing your hand. Okay. That, this is a BS story. Yeah. This doesn't exist. I'm going to yell at Justin. Justin. Yeah. This this is BS. No, nah, man, I read it in Art Voice, News of the Weird. Yeah, News of the Weird, written by one stone guy in his mom's basement with the nipple piercings. <laughs> All right, I'll Germany. say Germany. I'll say Germany. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thanks. Yeah. BS this doesn't exist. Yeah. Standing around. <laughs> Why would the guy just go a uh, hundred million dollars? Go get him. Right. You know. Uh, what was it? Were they, were they, were they uh, haggling? Please. And oh, wait, wait a minute. What happened to the guy? Did the kid drown? Yeah, he drowned. Anyway. Because he couldn't raise enough money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah, and so by the way, I, I don't think it was a bunch of onlookers. It says all onlooker, an onlooker. So. Refuse. Where are you working? Where am I working? Yeah. Sunoco gas station. Ooh, Sunoco. We yeah. don't have those out here. No, that's the Middle Atlantic. You can get one of those. No, it's only on the East Coast. That's where, that's, I'd like that would be the middle of land. <laughs> I'd like to get myself a Mohawk gas station out here. We used to have those. Yeah, Out here we had them? Oh, yeah. 
Really? Mm-hmm. I don't remember those at all. There's a couple of mo. Oh, well, maybe mo- Northern California, right? No, there's a Mohawk out off of uh, the 405 and uh, like Roscoe or something. How about uh, oh? You know, I like Mohawk, and I want a Gasseteria. How about Turbo Herbst? Seen those? Know, have to see it written. All right, uh, Justin. Wait, are you well, working? Gasseteria is just that that thing in J- Jamaica Plain. I still New York. I want yeah. one. I want one. I'll go to any place. Like, like here's the thing. Well, the Arco is a uh, buck sixty-five a gallon. The Gasseteria is three ninety. Uh, I'm going to the Gasseteria just to say that's where I bought my gas. Hey, Justin. Yeah. Now, are you working? You're calling from Buffalo. Yeah. You work in the register. Yep. Do you? Or did you work in one of those bulletproof cages? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Like How dare you? Too. Yeah. yeah. It's convenience store. Yeah. Why would they put a bulletproof cage? In it? What he is, he can't. I wonder if he, if he were walking to an LA convenience store, if he would just freak out. Yeah, you work, you work in essentially an aquarium. <laughs> That's right. Which is great. Because bulletproof aquarium. You're in a bulletproof aquarium, and the customer stands out there where the bullets are flying. Yes. And by the way, they they stopped putting the talking hole in so the. So you thing. can't even talk to them. I know. I find myself mashing my face into the chain yes. slot, which is, uh, it is, uh, is there any dignity left in this goddamn city of ours, by the way? Your face is stuffed into the slots. Uh, yeah, no. No, those are the, those are the men. Uh, and think about it. Why are you putting your face uh, down there? Why are you doing you're it? You're trying to communicate. But, but with why, the guy why do you insist on only, putting it down there? I, it seems like the, the only opening in which, well, in which sound waves can travel. It's because no matter how, whatever the guy says to you, you can't hear it. So you assume it's because he's not putting his head down there. For all we know, he might not hear anything we say. I always like the subtle move, too, where uh, he drops the uh, Snickers bar into the sliding yeah. tray. What's the uh, You're waiting for it, and it's like, uh, no, listen, Pally. You dropped the 85 cents in there first. I, I, I know you have a $55,000 car there, but uh, drop the 85 cents. In. I, I know you've been coming to the same place for nine years, but drop because, you know, the day he slides that Snickers bar through there and you You're get running. It, You're running. You're running. Laughing like a maniac. You're going to Mexico. <laughs> you got to start a new life. So I do is I use, I, I use just a section of the Snickers bar, I give that to the coyotes who smuggle me into the border. Then I saw off another small piece. That's for the hacienda. Sure, of I course. And then I live off the rest of it. Prostitutes and alcohol and drugs, just little pieces. A couple girls come by the house, I shave them off. Just a very, very, just wafer thin piece of the Snickers bar I got for free from the jackass at the uh, L.A. gas station. Oh, the indignity. My guy down at the 76 doesn't even talk anymore. He just stares at me with his... Gives me the stink eye. It's just he just looks at me. He's just he just he's evil. I, and what is going on? What I I I I'm I, I, I I'm going I'm going insane with the L.A. gas stations. Is, <laughs> is there some sort of decree from the good folks at uh, 76 and uh, Chevron that we have to get horrible steely eyed foreigners just to shoot you the stink eye and uh, no uh, come again, no uh, thanks a lot, and no. Uh, how they were you saying doing? It, you couldn't hear it. Oh, they didn't say it. There's a lot of cages. Yeah. Oh. Uh, what are we doing? We gotta write a. I gotta write a letter. I I, I grew up. I I, I miss. Uh, I grew up. You know, watching these '76 commercials with uh, Murph, the uh, kindly redheaded gent who was headed out. Can I check your oil? How about I wipe that windshield down? And I like the way Justin, when you suggested that maybe he was sitting in a cage, like, no, 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 <laughs> you're mistaken. I'm in a convenience oh, store. It's like, God, yeah, I, that's I, right. I'm I'm I'm, I'm 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 completely convinced that living in Los Angeles destroys. And erodes your will <laughs> to live. Like, it, uh, how depressing. Because you accept is, stuff, you well, accept horrible if, things. What if I said, you're going to live in a magical land, and everywhere you go, no one's going to speak your language, everyone's just going to look at you like an a hole, shoot you the stink eye, and almost everyone you deal with is just going to treat you like a criminal and untrusted. Is, it, is that that's, that's you're, a good you're life? A do- you're a doctor then. Yeah. All right. Adam, All listen right. how upset right. you just got. Listen to this. What? I, 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 I'm I, 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 I'm a go- <laughs> I know I did that. What? I, 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 I'm, do, I, 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 I'm a go. He meant to do that, Anderson. You don't, uh, you don't understand anything about uh, an actor, do you, Anderson? No? no. Taking a break. Taking a break. All right, taking a break. I'm getting sweaty. I'm getting fired up. We'll uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. One eight hundred love one nine one. Wow, 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 you feel, you feel, wow, wow, you feel, you feel. We'll be right back. Hey, 
everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified seven of all. Dennis Rodman is coming in here. Who else? Ron Jeremy. Crystal Method. Those are your boys, Drew. I know. I will recognize them this time. Yeah. I finally got them in my head. They don't look like uh, they don't look like rockers, those Crystal Method they guys. They look, look like, like truckers. <laughs> yeah. Or something that rhymes with truckers. Lisa Loeb and Ian Zuring are going to be in here for some Spider-Man DVD thing coming up uh, next week. I have no idea what that is. What that's referring to, even. What the hell are Lisa Loeb and Ian Zuring or Ian Zuring doing together? I don't know. We'll see. You think we'll see? I yeah. bet they're here for two hours and we don't figure it out. No. Nah. All right. All right, let's go to the phones. Yes, Drew? Yeah. We got we to gotta heal the babies. Mm-hmm. Cynthia? Yes. You're 18? Yep. You pierced oh. your nose? Yeah, I gauged it to a two as the size of a pencil. Basically, my septum. Right. Like, yeah. like a bone through your nose? No, it, right now it's just a plug. The septum in here. Yeah, it's, through the through the, the septum is the... Uh, that divides the nostrils. And it's the size of a pencil eraser. Yeah. Yeah, or a pencil. Yeah. You did it your, who did it? Well, I got it professionally done. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, that's hot. You know, when I see a chick with a third nostril, <laughs> man, <laughs> man. I would think that would erode further and completely dissolve the septum eventually. All right. Well, why? Who are you mad at? No. <laughs> no one. No one? Yeah. You, don't, you don't hate your dad? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> a couple beats for that. All right. But you don't, you know, that doesn't sound like a ringing endorsement. Where is your dad? Well, I have a stepdad. Where is your biological dad? Yep, I never knew him. You never what? Never knew, knew him. him. All right. All right, so uh, how's life going? Where are you working? Well, I work at the union at my university. No. Oh, you're calling from uh, Phoenix. So what school do you go to? NAU. All right. Northern Arizona. Northern Arizona uh, University. All right. Uh, all right, so uh, what do you want to do with your nose piercing? What's the question? Well, it kind of hurts. I've had it for over a month, and, like, the crusting stopped. But, like, it kind of hurts when it gets, like, grubbed or touched, like, on a tip. Yeah, th I, I can't believe they did this to you. They, they, that is a cartilage that can begin to dissolve, can get infected. You could literally eat away your entire nose. Yeah, that's that, what happened to Tom Arnold. No, no, it, it's much oh, worse. No, that was the 7,000 pounds of coke he did in the, the 90s. They, that's right, he gets a nasal septum. This is even worse. I mean, this is a this could really get going. And people lose their nose to infections and stuff. Really? Literally, I mean, you look right into their head. Really? Yeah. Can you see what they're thinking? No. Yeah. You see the little brain man up there, though, running around. Yeah, see the light bulb go off when yeah. they get the idea? Yeah. <laughs> Drew, is there a light bulb in there? Of course. All right. So the, I, I can't, you know, it's rejecting, it sounds like. It's still inflamed. I, I think it's no, hugely you just take, risky. Uh, just take it out and let it heal up, would you? If it will, it may not. I, I can't imagine that. Uh. What do you think this is? What, what, what element look are, good you to somebody? To yeah. <laughs> are you trying to attract? Are you trying to get uh, indigenous uh, people from uh, Australia? Australia? Yeah. <laughs> what, Drew? What, is there an echo in here? Yeah. Are you looking for aborigine guys, or who are you looking for? Or just more effed up guys that hate their parents? No, I, I want a good guy. <laughs> okay. This isn't a great way to do it. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. So, so if I take it out, what will happen? It'll close up, and we'll all live happily ever after. I actually think you ought to see it in your nose and throat, doctor, myself. Your nose and throat, okay. All right, yeah. this uh, line's horrible. But look, it, let me explain something, uh, folks, ladies. Uh, you guys, with your, uh, your piercings and your nipple rings and your tats and all this uh, nonsense, as far as a woman goes, as far as a guy being attracted to it, it, it it's, it's really... It's really the. It, it's really like you taking a uh, effed up old uh, AMC Matador and sticking a bow on top of it. It, it doesn't make it any more desirable to us. Oh, we, uh, we token, see an effed up car with a bow on it. If it was a, you know, a Aston Martin with a bow on it, it doesn't matter. The bow doesn't matter either. 
No, no, right? no. If we, if it's like, yes, if you got the Aston Martin and it had the bow on, you'd look at it, you pull it off, throw it away, yeah. climb in and drive. Or you think, what, what's this? Yeah, why what, is it what's, unnecessary? Yeah. That's right. So here's what it's going to do. It's not going to make you any more attractive to any sane man. If anything, it might make you less attractive. If anything. It could only hurt. Yes. Now, on. there's a handful of effed up guys who really dig a couple of uh, nipple rings. But then that's the guy you got. The effed up guy. Yes. Women, uh, if they could just focus on uh, hitting the treadmill a little, maybe a boob job and a little kissing potion. Oh, yeah. I like that kissing potion. What would they be kissing? And some rouge. <laughs> <laughs> but don't, don't worry about the piercings. And, the ta- and, the, and for that matter, the tats. There's hot chicks who have tats, and guys go, ooh, that's a hot chick. Yeah, she's hot, and she's got a tat on her. But she, she was plenty hot minus the tat. Maybe hotter. Yes? Tat again says something. All right. Drew, who are we talking to when we come back? I was going to talk to uh, the guy in five. Damn. All right. That's uh, bisexual. I'm t- no, no, it's, no guys are bisexual anymore, Dan. Yeah, um, I think I'm bisexual. Um, I like both sexes equally as well. Um, mm-hmm. I saw pornography when I was little, though, um, mm-hmm. and a lot of other sexual things. And I was wondering if that could have a uh, taint on my sexuality. All taint. right. It may change on your sexuality. Hold on a second, yeah. Dan. All right. Don't uh, engage in intercourse with uh, a male or a female. Till we right. get back. Till we get back to you, all right? Okay. Where's all Marcus right. tonight? All right. Drunken Marcus from last Hello. night. What a catch. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with bisexual Dan after this. Here it is. Bottom line, it sucks being single today. Tons of lame people and no decent prospects. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. Call the Dateline. 1-877-889-DATE. Loveline. Loveline will be right back. So get your problems ready. Ready. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. And we left off. We were going to speak to bisexual Dan. Is it, Drew, is bisexuality down in the it United seems States? So bad, doesn't it? it doesn't seem now like it's in, metrosexuality. But it's not in vogue anymore. Well, not the way it was. I think you're right. Yeah, metrosexuality right. is straight guys... Looking gay. Looking gay. Yeah. Using a lot of product. Mm-hmm. Worrying about, uh, and here's the whole thing about straight guys, especially if you're married. You shouldn't care what you look like. That's the whole thing. Like, people go, you know, you should, you should pluck your eyebrows. You, de- you should have your teeth whitened. You should dress more fashionably. You should uh, stop scratching yourself and then smelling your fingers. How dare they? Yeah. And my thing is I'm like, uh, yeah, I know. I, I, should, I should do a lot of stuff. I should, yeah, but I'm married. I should, I should donate more time to charity. I, I should do a lamb. Nah, who cares? I'm not going to do it. Don't care. Walk around in sweatpants with a boner. I'm fine. Dan? Yeah, and um, also the last time I called was on Anderson's birthday. Anderson's uh, birthday? Yeah, um, we battled in sound effects and I lost. Oh, really? Yeah, and he called right. me a, a jackass, I think, and, and uh, took me off the air. Well, it's hard to argue with Anderson. <laughs> He's bisexual. Well, <laughs> what also, kind of sound effects do you have, Dan? Um, I work with digital um, animation and photography, and I, I don't have them right now because um, I'm off of my computer, and uh, I can't use it right now. But All right, what, what's mm-hmm. your question? Um, Dan, I, uh, let me just make a oh, quick wow. observation about Dan. Dan better just go gay, because <laughs> I don't know if he's going to get any of the ladies. Is there a serious nerd factor going on here? What kind of chicks is Dan getting? Anime chicks. Really? What's up with those guys? I mean, we're not even going to talk about that that Japanese actually, anime I, crap, actually, too. Actually, I only date um, black people, too. I dated, I'm dating a black woman right now. Really? Yeah. Are, are you into anime? No, I'm not. I hate Japanese animation. Mm. Good. And and what about uh, what about only dating black people? Um, I just... Uh, I like... Uh, what also, color are you? Also what Asian, color are you? Also Asian people, too. Um, um, I'm white. All right. All right, so uh, 
Fine. Uh, okay, so uh, that's your thing, and uh, you're bi. Yeah. And the yeah. thing is that my parents, they, my dad's, my dad, my father's dad, um, my parents, my don't mom, himself. and my family don't even know that I'm um, dating. They don't even know that I'm bisexual, and they are uh, right-wing uh, Christians. Mm. Well, 18, I suspect they think you're dating. You know what you should do? You should just, one day, you should just, you should just uh, do it on a Sunday, like after <laughs> church, or just bring them home. Uh, Mom? I'd like you to. I'd like to introduce you to to my uh, two sexual partners. Uh, that's Lucius, and uh, that's Nachilla. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> to the blackest uh, representations uh, from uh, either sex. Uh, is this the reason he's doing this? What's your question exactly? Um, you know, is, is it? Is, oh, and was it was it shaped by me looking at pornography when I was little? How old were you when you were looking at the photography? Um, um, about six and five. And you said you saw some other sexual stuff, too? Yeah, um, it, I don't know what it's called, but I think I remember watching porn where people went to the bathroom on each other. Oh, my God. Yeah. This was your dad's stuff? Yeah. What did he die from? Um, he uh, committed suicide. Is he an addict? Alcoholic? Did I say committed suicide? Yeah. Huh? This is when he found out you were bi? No, he, 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 um, he died from um, cocaine and morphine that's together. What I, that's what I'm talking about. Ooh. That all fits together now. Also I, choked on some dookie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing the... It's funny making fun of the disease. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> Dan of the ladies love Dan. Yeah, black ladies love a guy who's smooth. Like Dan. Like Dan. Yeah. Hello, Dan, I'm Lucius. Dan, there's... Um, there's... You know, having the addict dad that died a, a suicidal death is is traumatic enough, and that no. will certainly affect your yeah. choice in relationship and sexuality. And then, yeah, the, seeing pornography can have an impact mm. on young people. More mm. often than not, it makes them kind of sexually compulsive, at least the males. And I don't know that it necessarily figures into sexual orientation. All right, Dan. Well, look, let's just let's do a little uh, mop up work with you. You uh, are you working? Yes, I'm working. All right, and it sound like you're you're in a lucrative field. You're going to do okay. You have yeah. like computers, and he's got a, a girlfriend. Stick mm -hmm. with all that. Stick with your girlfriend. Or stick with somebody. Yeah, and and look, if you want to get a little therapy because your dad uh, yeah. OD'd or killed himself, yeah. uh, so by all means, feel free. Feel free to take some of that money you're making and do it. Yeah, to me, the, the, not only did uh, Dan give me the feel of the child of an alcoholic, but just that leaving heavy-duty porn around is sort of an addict move. By the way, b b back to that uh, Japanese uh, animation. I am I the only guy who's freaked out by this stuff? Like, uh, I flip around the TV on a Saturday morning. I see that weird Pokemon stuff. And the the uh, everyone's, Yu -Gi -Oh. everyone's got those crazy eyes the, the size of Volkswagens. Yeah, my one son is into it. For a while, you got to you got to take you got to take him and have him evaluate it because <laughs> I'm 39. I see that stuff. I freak out. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. It just it it's it's uh, I don't know what to call it other than you know it's sort of aesthetically irritating. It looks bad. The people move in 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 sort of awkward uh, style, herky jerky mo movements. Yeah. It, it there's nothing. The mouse don't there's move. There's just zero appealing about it. I'm with you. Well, what is it? Who's into that crap? And well, how can we get it to stop? It it haunts my dreams. Yeah, it really is. I I I'll watch it sometimes, and this and I'll, I'll, they'll go like, Bleh! I have to take a shower. I'm really, I I don't know why I have a visceral reaction to it. It's I, I don't have that strong reaction, but I, I have a sense of what you're talking about. Yeah, it's just it's un it's uncomfortable. Yeah, it's unpleasant. Yeah, right. And then you you know switch over and you see SpongeBob and you go like ah. That's nice. And then you switch it okay. back, and it's a Pokemon, and it's like, ugh. It's sort of aggressive. And Angular aggressive. What are they doing? Let's, let's, we got to, you know, we got to take the pencils out of those Japs' hands. They're going nuts over there. Let's send them our SpongeBob and tell them to relax. They're going crazy, Drew. I can't stand that stuff, that Pokemon. Who, what, go, who got this Pokemon thing going? Is it over? It's over. Thank Christ. Although I did like Speed Racer. Same thing. Simba. Kimba. Kimba, I beg your pardon. Simba. <laughs> Kimba the White Lion. Yeah. Speed Racer, though, didn't have those crazy saucer eyes. Who's the one? Not Pokemon. Uh, Who's the other one you mentioned? Yu-Gi-Oh. yu gi That stuff's creepy. Yeah. Is that how they look at us? Like a hubcap-sized eyes? I don't know. It's like, look, we do have round eyes, but if you really just... Uh, look, Drew, just look at me. Let me look at your eye. Yeah. It looks like a vagina. Not a... Come here. 
Yeah. No, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, okay. Their eyes are marginally yeah. more of a slit form than ours are. Right. But overall, if you, you draw someone's eye, it's not, not just not like a Frisbee mm -hmm. stuck to your head. It what reminds me of those pictures of... And what if we did that with uh, them? We do. do. Oh, we do? Okay. <laughs> that is funny. You're right. We drew them with the straw hats and just that. Just slit eyes. Oh, yeah. All right. It's true. And we played that. Not, not slit ding, eyes, ding, just ding, lines. Ding. Oh, just the lines. Yeah, just, just the lines. Chris? Hello? Right. I think Chris is there cut is. off. Hello? Chris? Yeah. You're 20. What's up? Um, um... I'm not particularly sure if I was uh, molested as a child. All right. What happened? Well, when I, I had a member of my family who, uh, when I was younger, we, we he was a child, too. He's only three years older than me. And when I say uh, from, say, six to, say, nine, and we would play, and uh, it would always end up with, like, us in our underwear, like under the covers, like hiding from everybody else, and he would be touching me and like kind of, right. you know, caressing me and kissing okay. me on, on stuff like that, you know. And it kind of, it kind of freaks, it freaked me out for a while, and you know, every. Well, time. hold on a second. Did were, did it freak you out when it was going on? Not really. It, it more uh, less freaked me out because I ended up moving a short time after, like after it stopped, and I ended up moving to the next city, and. Uh, and uh, uh, as I, like, every time somebody would bring up the, the topic of, like, say, uh, abuse and stuff like that, it, it would, like, what happened would come back to me and how messed up that was. Cause okay, well, well, you know it wasn't right, and it was sort of a boundary violation, and it can be distressing to you, but it doesn't have to be experienced as overt abuse. Yeah, we've, uh, phone, uh, phone's coming in and out tonight. Yeah, I noticed More that. out than in. Yeah. So we'll finish talking to Chris. I'll put him on hold because his phone's driving me nuts. Uh, a lot of people had a lot of things that we would consider borderline or maybe a little more than borderline happen. Uh, here's, it's, it's a matter of degree. And, and how you and, experience it. And how you experience it and uh, what kind of cloth you're cut out of. Some people have horrible things happen to them and d don't seem all that affected by it. And some people have marginal things happen to them and seem very affected by it. Uh... Maybe this sounds like denial, but my plan would be not to look at myself as damaged goods and not to look at myself as a victim. On the other Couldn't hand, hurt. you want to be realistic. And if you have trouble in relationships or your sexual identity is affected, yeah, eh, I might want to look into it a bit. Yeah, and, reading a book or doing a little therapy or something never hurts anyway. I mean, think about if we're an eight-year-old girl and a nine-year-old boy. And he was kissing her all over the place. And we'd be like, oh, whoa, hey, well, he's completely he's attacked you. You must have felt powerless. Well, yeah. maybe, maybe not. Yeah. And uh, in the boy, on boy may feel that way, too. He just sort of gets swept into it and, you know, sort of a kid that gets manipulated by another kid and is into something that may not be want to be in, but feels out of control. And that, that could be disturbing. All right, Drew, who, hypothetical, <laughs> who would you rather drive across country with? Yeah. Uh, a guy who wears the um, tiger-striped muscle pull-up pants. Yeah. Or a guy who's really into the Japanese anime. The muscle guy. Yeah, me too. Because yeah. the anime guy, is, he's a, a nerd that's liable to put a shiv in you somewhere around <laughs> Indiana. Do you really spend a lot of your day thinking about hypothetical S like this? Mm-hmm. S size. No, this one I just came up with. But yes, yeah. I, do, I, do, I do spend a good part of my day... And speaking of talking about stuff, we never did uh, finish. Drew, you're the worst radio host in America. Finish what? You said we're going to talk about diet and about uh, yeah, putting chips that. and all yeah. that. We never, we never, we never revisited it. it. You had some ideas. I was saying today because here's the thing. You know, first off, they've uh, announced that uh, teens from the United States or adolescents from the United States are like the fattest yeah. in the world. And they just keep getting fatter. Yeah. And uh, I understand it because, uh, obviously, they're just eating the same crap. There doesn't seem much movement going on with them these days. Uh, they're, I, so, I uh, here's the thing. There's a... There's, there's a all right, let, me, let, me, uh, let me try to figure this out. There's a group of kids that are very into sports. A certain percentage of society, of uh, children's society, that will always be into it. Yeah, sports. And then there's everybody else that could be drawn into it. 
And then there's then there's a small percentage that'll never be into it. And then there's course, everyone else. We'll get them in with the uh, president's council. Oh sure. We'll see how many uh, pull-ups and sit-ups they can do. That sure. ah, that'll nonsense. Them. Listen. Then there's the other sixty percent of everyone that could be sucked in if it was good enough. But if they got an Xbox and a bag of Cheetos and no one's putting any right. pressure on them, they're staying home and they'll get their. But okay. Ha. Ah, here's mm. what I'm saying. Yeah. There's a certain amount of competition, aggression. Speaking mainly for boys here, mm-hmm. but women too, mm-hmm. and and basically almost conflict the kids need. Mm-hmm. Kids need boys. Out- outlets. Boys need to get blow off that steam. Yeah, if even you will. even again, male chimpanzees do that in systems. Right now, if you have a video game in which they can achieve all of this and never leave the house, mm. it'll be satiated. That's an interesting theory. I don't know if that's true, but I'll, let's go. Oh, it with is. It. Let's go with it. Okay. No, because you have you theoretically, still... it's a horm- it's a it's a different neurological condition when your muscles are moving and things as opposed to f- a, a virtual experience. But okay, let's keep. But going. kids will still have the "I beat you, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah." Look who's number one. I mean, the most calories they burn is celebrating right. their mock wrestling victory right. uh, that uh, took place in their Xbox or whatever football, whatever. There's even golf video games to me, which oh, is yeah. like, really isn't, isn't how how much how much more how much more you got to slow that sport down? <laughs> Virtual golf, okay. So this is all being satiated to a certain degree, mm-hmm. and that they're oh yeah, I'm a competitive guy. I, I'm in my underpants, fat as a pig. I never leave the living room, but I do nothing but compete, compete against my last score, online. compete against yeah. online, yeah. Compete, yeah, get all out of my system, never have to leave the house. All right. All right, I think that's uh, a that, one that's of the problems. Uh, there, there's many factors coming in. There's no doubt about it. Another piece is the portion size we eat, and when you when you when Europeans come and see the portions at the Waffle Houses, yeah, they, they, they're flipped oh, out. On. There's no never, not a European alive that goes to a Waffle. But the house, point but. is that they they. I remember when I was in Holland when I was traveling around to medical school. I, I said, "Hey, can I have a ham and cheese omelet?" They're like, "Ham and cheese in the same." Op- yeah. Ham, yeah. Yeah. I know. We, Two I, I mean, eggs? Like, what? You, know, you, you, see, you see the Pizza Hut commercials. It's like, this pizza, this, pizza, this, this has yeah. bacon, yeah. Canadian bacon, ham. And we're putting cheese in the crust. We're we, at, we, <laughs> we, there's not enough calories and fat here. We're actually injecting the Canadian bacon with cheese. Yeah. I mean, literally, they go, this is the monster pizza. Yeah. It has a whole onion. Cabbage, a turnip, yeah. a pig <laughs> is on this. A cow, yeah. it's got hamburger meat sprinkled on it. I oh, mean, it's like man. they show the thing. It's like it's seventy yeah. pounds, and then in the crust is is filled with the uh, liquid margarine. <laughs> you know, it's like really, yeah. Like this should a pizza weigh more than the the car that's and, delivering it? And those things stimulate further hormonal sort of changes in our brain and then um, between our brain and our stomach that stimulate more appetite and need for more fo- more food. Yeah. And then once we achieve that weight, our body tends to try to stay there. Right. And, and then if you add in a genetic burden, then it's almost impossible to come back down. Now if you're sedentary, and now here's the final, the crown and glory is you have an effed up family system, you're miserable, and you're looking for any relief and satisfaction. No. Well, food gives it to Look, you. here's the other thing. Don't care about getting laid. See, when you're nine... <laughs> you don't care if you're fat, like like yeah. But nine really don't get it's it's the thirteen to fifteen year old. Uh, there's there's well, first off, there's plenty of plenty of fatty nine and ten year olds yeah. these days. But yeah, yeah. here's what I'm saying. Here's what keeps most adults in line. No one's gonna f me. <laughs> I'm not gonna be affable. But the moment you are, except for my black guys, I will not have. Well, they like big women. It's documented. True. Cannot lie. Cannot lie. Here's the thing. What keeps you in line is how you appear to the opposite sex. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you're in high school yeah. and you got a boner all day yeah. and you're horny and you're looking at yourself in the mirror with your shirt off and you're going, oh, Christ, yeah. I'll never get laid. This is a mm-hmm. serious incentive to go hit the weights or yes. go jog around the track. When you're 9 and 10 years old, it's like, hey, F it. I got my Xbox. I got my fruit roll up. I got my uh, Carl's Jr. And I, and I, don't I, give a I, and I have nothing else. I don't have family. I'm not alone. I'm do, unhappy. Even if I do, I, I don't, I don't I care. I've been traumatized. I, I hope I can't no regulate. one wants to screw me. I don't care no. about screwing anybody else. But and you know who what I mean? cares the, what I look, look like? We talk to trauma survivors all night long here. The only source of sort of gratification they can find sometimes is food. 
Right. Of, of a sort of, yeah, but, the but, where they calm but Drew, down obviously with. this problem is bigger than just trauma survivors. Or but that's, as we know, but, uh, we know that may affect somebody 23% of the population. It's a growing population. All right. It definitely factors in. I'm just saying somebody needs to pull these fatties aside at 10, 11, 12 and go, look, trust me, you're going to want to get laid one day. And here's the thing. You get fat at 9 and 10. Again, you don't have the you don't have the I got to get laid angle worked anywhere. By the time you're 16, 17, and ready to get laid or want to get laid, you've been used to looking at yourself fat for five, eight years, and you don't care. There is a certain point when you just become a fat guy, and that's just you. Mm. The hard part's over. But as you know, that's usually somebody keeping people away with that too. Yeah, but not for guys. A lot of times, yeah. guys are just like, "Hey, I'm the fat guy." Once you show up at your school, hey, everybody, I'm the fat guy. I'll be the official fat guy. I'll be playing the role of the fat guy. I'm like Norm from Cheers. Guarantees what you, I'm the a, fat guy. A career in comedy? No, there's no, yeah, and there's no, right, there's no, the pressure's taken off. Hmm. All right, Drew. Look at Drew up on his feet. He's banging the chair around. He's very excited. So what are the breakthroughs? What's going to, uh, how well, are we going to skinny I, I think people some out? of the breakthroughs are about what the hormones are that the, the uh, stomach puts out that the brain receives that lets the stomach know it's full. Uh-huh. And there's something called ghrelin, there's something called leptin, and, the, and these things are being sort of manufactured now. And there are people that have deform abnormalities in the function of those hormonal systems, and they never feel full. And guess what? They weigh 400 pounds. Yeah. They well, can't stop eating. They have to, have to go into homes where they structure the environment for them to keep them from eating because they eat themselves to death. We uh, we can put a hoppity horse on Mars, but we can't regulate people's eating. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Let's uh, take a little break, Andrew. Right. Are there any more of those almonds left? No, I ate them all last you night. Ate, you ate all my goddamn almonds? But Someone sent me those almonds. With I was the messenger. Remember that? Those were my were, Those were us. Those were us. Yours are the peanuts that are in there. Those are yours. Oh. That's yours. All right. Well, we'll Enjoy. get into that. All right. all right. After this. Here it is. Hello? Who's this? Uh, this is Love Line. 1 800 Love 191. Love Line will be right back. Hey, everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam, that's Dr. True. Phone number 1 800 LVE 191. Drew broke some wind in here. We haven't christened the studio yet. You've, you've not done your work in here. You're, you know what I mean? It, I'll tell you why. Because I haven't had a, a big night. Yeah. Now, look, there's no doubt that I could fart now and again. And in fact, you haven't had any gas in this since we entered in here. <laughs> let me say, let me tell Trouble you why. Let me tell you why. Because I, it's not like... I couldn't have squeezed out a fart like on Wednesday and maybe maybe one again a week later. Yeah. I don't want to start off that way. You want to you want to present on a on a, on I a night when you really night. yeah, I want yeah. a banner night. Yeah. I and I haven't had one of those in a while. In a long time. Well, don't jinx it. Yeah. I'm saying wait, you you got to build me up. Yeah, I if know. you break me, it could be years. Mm. And it Drew, as Drew will attest to, remember when I sent you out in the hallway, I got you an extra 20 foot of mic cord, and you just went out and did the show from the hallway? And really uh, was traumatized by that. It's to this day, right? It's bad, yeah. It's awful. When you, when you have a good night, it's uh, impressive. Yeah. So Chris, you'll be ready for this. Yeah. Chris, you, it's going to be good. But again, the, yeah, I'm not going to... I, I want to I I come out with a bang. Not a whimper. Well, you're, this is a much bigger room than we used to be in. You'd have to really it's fill it. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of volume in yeah. here. But the thing that's nice about studios is they're just covered with uh, acoustic cloth. <laughs> that absorb that yeah. stench. Yeah, and then all you yeah. got to do is like uh, pick up a coffee mug and throw it against the wall and pow. It's like somebody farted. You, just, you could break it free. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, let's talk to uh, Brian, who's 23. Brian? Yes. You're 23? Yes. You have a 30-year-old girlfriend with two kids? Wife. Married. Oh, okay. All right, what's up? Well, uh, having a little bit of trouble. We're separated right now. What's the problem? Um, nah, I think it's more me. It's just uh, more uh, more things going on in my head. Confusion. Mm -hmm. Don't know if I want to be with her. Don't know if I do. Well, whose two kids are they? 
from another and guy. Her Ex husband. All right. Yeah. But you were married to this woman. The kids must be attached to you as well. Yes. Huh. Now, what about the kids? Don't you miss the kids? Yes. Aren't you worried about them? Yes. Mm. I'm going to take a guess at what you do for a living, Brian. Okay. Audience warm up. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Huh? Close. <laughs> what? What is it? No, I don't know. Actually, I'm. Uh, Independent travel agent. Travel. Online travel. Tra really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like the sound yeah. effects. <laughs> yeah. I just have a, uh, this kind of personality that could not be going to waste sitting behind a computer. This guy needs to be in front of an audience. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, I like to interact with people, definitely. All right. Well, first. that's good. Look at him. He's warming up. Okay. So uh, you like uh, to interact with everybody but your wife, and uh, uh, you've moved right. out. You've separated. Right. What's your question? Well, um, I, let's see, 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with a bipolar manic depression. All right. Um, I've, I've had a lot of problems with them, with uh, medication that I took in the past. Um, they stuck me on lithium and, and Paxil. And what's your question? Well, I'm, I'm scared to go back and speak to anybody. Um, I feel like I have a lot of problems in the past with family. Just a lot of things have gone on in my head. I just, I'm really confused. You're scared to go, you're scared to go back and what? You said I'm scared to go back. I'm 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 scared to go back and maybe talk to a counselor. Why? Don't know. Just fear that's in my head. Uh, Are you on medication now? No. All right. Okay. Well, bipolar that's a chronic condition. If you're not on medication, you will get out of control, and then naturally enough, you'll become irritable and aggressive and possibly violent. And yeah, your wife won't want you around. Yeah. And, uh, but Brian, is your wife sane? No. Yes, she's sane. She is. Okay. That's, that's why she won't right, have go, go back to your counselor, well, get well, on your medication, and re re reclaim your life. Well, Dr. Drew, it's not that she doesn't want me around. It's that I, I'm the one that, I'm the one that left. I know, but you're off your medication. Why'd you leave? I've, I have, just wanted to, wanted to get away. All right. Okay. Well, look. And by the way, what? look. You don't get married. This is what twenty-three-year-old tw guys are impulsive. Yeah. True. Remember that feeling? Oh yeah. You just see, yeah, yeah, yeah. skin starts crawling. Oh. Just sit next to somebody, and you just think, I gotta get out of here. Yeah. Got to get out of here. And they were sitting next to me, thinking, I got to get out of <laughs> here. Oh. So we both left simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's a weird thing. I mean, uh, it's, I don't know, hormonal. I don't know what it is. But at 23, you're just not ready to uh, lay down stakes and uh, pitch a tent. You, you want to keep moving. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it happens. And this is why you shouldn't get married. You get kids involved and it gets complicated. But uh, he's got to get on the... Uh, well, get, get, get your his... medication. Right. The, the, the fact that you're fearful of talking to somebody suggests how powerful these feelings are. So come on. Gretchen? Yeah. Yeah. Gretchen, uh, that's a hot name, but that can go a couple ways. Huh. You know, Gretchen can be super hot or could be like kind of lesbo on the volleyball team. Okay. Right. Okay, what's up? Which one are you? Um, maybe a cross between. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's bad. I don't know. I, I'm not one to say that I'm super hot. Yeah, I don't like saying it about myself either, but sometimes I just break down and admit that I'm hot. <laughs> you blurt it out. I'm hot. Right. Hey, what am I going to do? So sue me. I'm hot. All right, so go ahead, Gretchen. Um, okay, this sounds really stupid. Cheesy almost. But I have a problem, I think, with sex. Like, uh -huh. I'm addicted to it. Right. Um, every time I get in a relationship with a guy that I really like... I think, you know, this one I should wait for because I think um, that guys will just lose girls that will Say that again? Guys will lose respect for girls that will have sex right away with them. And no, I don't know if that's no. a misconception. That's a misconception, yeah. Well, okay. no, it's it's a it's a partial misconception. The reality is the guy that's only there to have sex with you if you give him sex, we'll lose, leave sooner. Well, he will, he, right. he will use that as an excuse to or leave. stepping yeah. stone to leave. A right. guy who's interested in a relationship... It doesn't matter. Yeah, although okay. it, there, you know, it's, not just, it's not black and white. There right. are shades There's of gray here. It factors right. in. And, right. and in general, 
it's not a bad plan to uh, give it a couple dates before uh, the oh, panties yeah, come off. Yeah. But okay. it's uh, not a deal breaker if it's with a guy who's not interested in breaking the deal. Okay. But is there a problem if I want to wait and I like I just can't? Well, what what? Let's examine why you can't. What what is, what's the problem? I don't like. I don't know. Like I, like it just happens every time. Like I. That that, I that is just... not that is not sexual addiction. That is okay. problems with boundaries, difficulty being assertive, mm-hmm. letting your wishes and your motivations being prioritized in the relationship. Is there booze involved? No, no. Yeah. This is completely at my own will. Like. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying. I is want it? it the- do you, do mean, you drink a few wine coolers and then find your judgment is impaired? I don't drink wine coolers. Oh, really? Well, no. We got nothing, we, we got nothing more to talk about. Very concrete, that Gretchen. She does not drink wine. <laughs> Let me tell you something about wine coolers. Uh, they're yummy. <laughs> I'd drink them if it wasn't just like drinking a bunch of corn syrup. <laughs> and, you know, Drew, you always say that, uh, you know, alcohol just gets... Uh, converted uh, sugar. Sh- sh- yeah, converted <laughs> fructose or whatever. Sugar. Whatever. But sugar, what do you say it gets converted to? Something other than sugar. Well, anyway, here's my point. Uh, what about something that already is sugar, like one of those wine coolers? That's not sugar. It's concentrated sugar. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's more. I mean, you're still better off drinking uh, red wine than you are margaritas, right? Yeah. Yeah, sugar on sugar. Yeah, sugar on sugar. Yeah, yeah red wine's good. It keeps the blood flowing. Mm-hmm. Keeps the arteries moving. It shrinks your brain, but that's right. It shrinks your brain. Yeah. That's a good good study came out about that a couple weeks ago. Shrinking the brain? Yeah. Let me tell you something about my brain. Too big. <laughs> so good. You, you, be found, you found a treatment for that. Yeah. I like my brain. It's like uh, the waistline on a uh, NFL lineman. Needs to come down a few inches. Okay. I got too much brains already. It's destroying my life. Uh, Sitting around thinking about stuff all the time. Hypotheticals. Who would you rather drive across country with? Ponytail guy or nipple fanny guy. pack guy or nipple guy or guy dude bro guy. <sighs> Some guy got shot, by the way. I was just uh, reading about this in the newspaper today. Guy got shot in the brain, speaking of small brains. Once, uh, about once a year, a construction worker gets shot with that 16-penny nail out of the nail gun uh, in the brain. Uh, Never seems to do any damage, Yeah, which I take as sort of an insult as an ex-carpenter. That uh, guy can take three and a half inches worth of steel, uh, piercing a skull, and never seems to do anything. And, uh, you know, the doctors always always do that thing where they go, had it been, what is it with you guys? You get some whole, you, what, you do a whole semester on the uh, hypotheticals? What if? if that bullet had been just a couple of, just a couple millimeters to the left. You know what that is? That's the press coming in and going, what if? How yeah, could it? What if? What if, what yeah, if? It's like, all right. Well, oh, Gretchen hung up on us. Ah, screw Gretchen. We're going to go back to Gretchen. We're going to finish don't talking to her. Gretchens in my life. I'm just saying, how can a, a three and a half inch nail go in your head and then the doctor say if it had been a quarter inch this way or that way, there could have been some real damage? Well, because how much it, your it, brain it, do you need? It's, it's not about the brain, it's about the arteries. If you clip an artery, it's game over. Yeah, head just explodes. Yeah, and so that's, yeah. that's what the what if. All right. How many parts of your brain do you have? Many. Many? What yeah. part could you lose? Depends what function you're not interested in having, whether it's motor or sensory or vision or thought want, or emotion. I don't want memory. Yeah, your hippocampus. You hippocampus? That. Yeah. Take that out with 16 so every moment. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, it's all new. It's like uh, every time I show up, hey, who are you? <laughs> Dr. Drew, I've seen you on TV. Hey, hey, buddy, what are you doing here? Isn't Drew Barrymore in a movie? Uh, We're doing it. Uh, I think it's a good premise for a movie. And it, 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 My life would be great. Adam like, Sandler's in it. We'll put Adam Sandler in. Oh, we, we'd be doing a radio show. I'd be excited. <laughs> uh, what are we doing? Doing a radio. Cool. What am I doing? What am I doing? Running the board? No, you're hosting. You're talking. Wow. It'd be good. Every night, excited. I probably wouldn't remember how to get here, but I'd be excited to see you, Drew. Instead of repulsed. Katrina? Yeah? You're 16? Yeah. You can't have an orgasm even though you've nope. had uh, s- lots of... You've been having sex for two years? Yeah. Lots of sex? Uh, kind of. Same guy? Um, a few different guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, listen, at 16... Most 16-year-olds do not have orgasms. And, and by the way, you've been having sex since you were 14? Oh, yeah. boy. Yeah, boy. Yeah, that's probably uh, 
Probably something you should slow down on a little bit, especially if it's not working for you. think of the motivational, the differences in the motivational priorities of the male and the female. If the male were not having an orgasm, would he be interested in sex at all? Mm. Think about it. I would probably... I would still try to beat off just to... I understand he would try. I would would spill something on my leg just to pretend like something happened. I understand he'd try and want to, but if you didn't know that... If if you'd never had an orgasm and you were not interested in having an orgasm, Mm -hmm. would you have sex? No. Yeah. Well, well, they describe me a step further. Why are you even talking to women? That's what I'm saying. And yet women still go and have, have sex with multiple different guys. What, what is that? Heidi Klum would like come by and go like, hey, uh, how about an erotic massage? And you'd be like, ooh, cooties. <laughs> Get lost, baby. I'm going to watch this uh, Japanese anime and see this Pokemon. Yeah, you're blocking the set, baby. Get lost. <laughs> yeah, you'd be disgusted by women. And there'd be zero, zero interaction, by the way. Yeah, you might want. I uh, might want some advice on. Uh, I don't know, planting bulbs or something. <laughs> but other, other, just some feminine advice. Like, hey, could you stitch up this uh, sleeve or a cuff in my pants? You, you'd have no interaction. Yes, sir. Thank you, Katrina. So, what's the question, Katrina? Phone's been going weird tonight. No, she's there. She just we lost her. That's all. What does that mean? What do you mean I mean, she's she's, she, she's no, she's gone. She's gone. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not the phone. It's she's gone. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. You, you've repulsed everybody. Now. I mean, you've <coughs> what are you going to do? Fleeing. Here's the thing, everybody. If, if uh, And by the way, I, what percentage of uh, 16-year-old girls have an orgasm through intercourse? Drew? Through intercourse? Yes. 10%? Okay. Is that about right? I'd say... But I'd say, yeah, ten twenty. I'd I'd say I'd go I'd go down. Nah, I'd, 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 I'd go like in the eight to yeah, thirteen yeah. Yeah, yeah. margin. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Oh. Eh, maybe. We're not giving them their due. Okay, uh, what percentage of sixteen-year-old girls have orgasms via oral sex? Add in another twenty, so thirty so percent overall. Probably able to thirty percent overall. What percentage, how much do you think that percentage would go up if they had crafty guys who knew what they were doing instead of, like, jerk-off guys with bad teenage mustaches? I don't think we got that much. We know, we'll never yeah, know. I would we'll never know. I'd yeah, like yeah, to find show. out. Yeah, yeah. I, I got to believe. Maybe it's, like, 20% overall. Damage. I'd go up to 30%. percent i work my way right through high school and really do some damage. <laughs> Take what I call the uh, hard hard luck cases. The hard yeah. cells. You know, the women who haven't had orgasms. Really bring, bring, them, bring them around. Oh, yeah. I can I can do things now that I, I, have, I possess powers <laughs> that I didn't possess in high school. Unfortunately, really. Superpowers? Or Superpowers. Human powers. Yeah, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, yeah, you could probably add another 10 to 15% on if you found a guy who really knew what he was doing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Instead of uh, throwing them darts at the uh, ass. They started having anal sex with girlfriend. Yeah, Sean? Yeah. No? Nah. Mm-hmm. To Sean. Hey, guys. You're 19. What's happening? Uh, what's happening is, yeah, I just uh, started having anal sex with my girlfriend, and I was wondering, like, during or, yeah, like, after I'm doing it, like, and she's giving me head, right, um, can she get sick by, like... No, I could vomit if you tell me, if I could picture your penis yeah, uh, wanna... exiting her anus and entering her mouth. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of dirty, but, um... Can she yeah. get sick? Is there like anything I could get on there that would get in her mouth? Bogus. Sick? Yeah. Good. Good. Nice. Nice uh, delivery, yeah. but yeah. bogus. Bogus. Hmm? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> uh, 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 uh. This is bogus. You're making this up. We don't believe you. No. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, we don't buy it. Why? It's not, it's not a question. It, it's not a question. Listen. What? What? What jackass wouldn't go uh, have the uh, the dignity to go uh, rinse his dork out in the toilet like I do? I mean, of oh. course, you just go wash yourself off. And, yeah, what do you think? Of course you could get something. Oh, well, I had no idea. I've seen it. You had no idea? You, you, don't, you don't think uh, fecal matter can make people sick? Yeah, that's what my question was. Oral fecal route. That's, uh... uh and lots of different infections can be delivered yeah. that way. Yeah. All right. Also, there are various bacteria that live down there that are infect, can infect in various ways. Yeah, no, I believe, Sean. No, I still don't. I think it was just good, really good delivery. Really? Yeah. Man. Sean, isn't that a tough sell, by the way? The, uh, uh, listen, uh, uh, good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is <laughs> I want to nail you in the keister. 
Uh, really? Uh, that's, well, good. Well, that's good news. What's well, the well, bad news? The bad? Uh, you're going to finish me off with some oral. No. Yep. And I'm not going to change positions. <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. move. I'm not moving. Yeah. And if, if, if I pull out and a piece of Duke falls <laughs> off, I'm putting it back on. See? Uh-huh. All right, Jack, off. All right, please. Listen, the oral fecal route is a very, uh, it's a, it's a much traveled Throughout human history, a much traveled route, but very yes, dangerous indeed. route. Uh, just All the good illnesses, with, uh, pitfalls, and uh, and, and dangers. They have quicksand, <laughs> vultures on every tree. There, I, I would like them to build a uh, finally finished that uh, bullet train. They're going to work uh, through the oral fecal route. <laughs> we get there a little bit faster. And true, where is my bullet train to Vegas? Ain't going to happen. Where is it? I know. Where is our bullet train? I just think we could hook up the new metro rail to that. Yeah. The United States is great. Like, uh, United States is like, hey, uh, it's 1963. Japan is, has uh, shown the world its first bullet train. Well, sir, hey, <laughs> hey, that's nice. Now it's 1975. Europe, all of Europe, a bullet train. And they're like, hey, that's, that's great, fellas. What? How, what, what, what should we wait? What, what, what should we wait, 150 years before the first? Don't, the goddamn train was invented here. Where, uh, where's my supersonic transport in the air, too? Right? When we were kids. Uh, supersonic transport. Some jack-off decided that what people really wanted was not shorter flying times, but cheaper flying prices. And so somebody decided because of the fuel cost and all that, that instead of making faster planes, they would just make bigger planes. If you, if you really remember, the and, other reason was noise pollution. Noise pollution. And now all I got is $89 flights to uh, <laughs> New York so I can sit next to some jack-off with cut-off sweats and a fanny pack and wearing stories and a wife beater who uh, ah. wants to know if I'm going to eat my Fiesta mix. I want them to raise the price. Thin out the herd just a little bit. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Dude, you got issues. Call Love Line. 1-800-LOVE-191. Go. Hey, everybody. It's Love Line, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Where are we, Drew? I'm looking around here. Hold on. Take this one. Mm-hmm. Let's talk to Crystal, who's 24. Crystal? Hi. What's up? Um, I had a question for you guys. Yeah. I have been in a relationship for five years. Mm-hmm. I have a four-year-old daughter. Mm-hmm. And I have had sexual relations with other women. Mm-hmm. And in, dur- During this marriage? Um, we split up and actually slept with another woman together. During, during the split, uh, blah, blah, blah. during the split up. Yes, we did. During the split up, you came together to screw another woman. Well, yeah. did you do it separately, or did it? You did it simultaneously. Simultaneously. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, that's why don't fantastic. you why don't you take that kid and put him in uh, one of those uh, beach uh, water balloon launchers and just uh, point him. Point him towards the nicest neighborhood. Surgical so tubing can... with the funnel on the end of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And just give the kid a chance. Hook the thing up to a tree and just, just they, launch she's, it that she's way. She's from Alaska. I'm sure there's some moose oh. family that she could hook it <laughs> yeah. up with. Yeah, be like a feral child. Yeah, I, I, I'd rather give her to the wolves. They'll take better care of her. Yeah, okay. well, they will. Whatever. Here's They're the thing. Christmas. Most of the time, the wolves will eat you, but once in a while, they'll raise you like they're... E- either you're way, you're better off. All right, so what's the question? Um, I actually had sexual relations with other women before I ever got with him. Mm-hmm. And we've had a lot of ups and downs in our relationship, and... Um, I think about being with other women a lot, and I don't know. My question is, do I want to be with other women because I'm unhappy in our relationship, or if I get with somebody else, am I still going to want to be with other women? Yes. I think generally yes, but it sort of doesn't matter at this point. You've relinquished your right to screw around. You have a child, get a relationship, get stable, that's it. Make your choice and stick with it. That's it. Maybe if you're with, by the way, if you're with girls, you're going to all of a sudden want to be with guys, too. Right. You can't do that. What happened to you? You get molested? Um, yeah. All right. No kidding. For a while, huh? Uh, no. It was when I was a lot younger, and it was actually 
several different occasions from different people. Oh, Only boy. like one time from each one. So yeah. over what period of time did that all go on? Twenty six uh, years. Around I was around four. Until when? Uh, just around four and five. Monday. So two years of this. Okay. And then when were you raped in adolescence? Um, I wasn't. No rape. Hmm. Quaint. Really? It normally happens. Did you get a boyfriend when you were like 12 or 13? Um, no, my first boyfriend was when I was 15. Huh. All right. Okay. Well, Crystal, um, here's what you're going to need to do. I, I'm going to give you some priorities. Okay. Um, you're, you're, you're holding no up kids. okay for no. someone who's been through what you've been through, but you have to do a little bit of work. No more kids. Yeah, no more kids. Right. All right, now your job is to try not to F up your four-year-old like you got F'd up when you were four. N not to right. let that trauma be transmitted. And okay. not to let the kind of people that were around you get around her, which you're going to magically be attracted to. Right. I understand be, that. Be very careful about who you're attracted to. Okay, so uh, you being with a man or being with a woman or sort of being bisexual is just an excuse to never really commit and bounce around. And to create chaos. And uh, look, if you were 24 and calling from Florida and saying, uh, I got no kids, I got no baggage, I just graduated college, I'm looking to uh, throw my heels up behind my ears and have a good time. Whatever. Knock yourself out. Yeah. But you have a kid now. And you, you also have a trauma that. history, and a lot of this is sort of recreating right. that trauma. So, uh, I would say uh, you got to get some therapy. You got to quit acting out. You got to do it on behalf of the kid. And if you're going to be with this guy, fine, but that's who you're going to be with. And you're going to have impulses, and you need to not act on them. That's all. Act as if. Yeah, look, the whole thing about being a parent, hypothetically, although my parents didn't do a lot of it, which is uh, you got to do stuff you don't want to do. Mm. Yeah, the kid's supposed to be in the child seat, supposed to be buckled up in the back. It's a hell of a lot easier just to throw him into the passenger seat because you're just going to the corner. <coughs> you got to stop and do it. All right. Absolutely. You're right, Drew? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, all this stuff. You want to you wanna have a few uh, cocktails and go down on the, the chick you work with? You want to. You can't. You don't. You can't. Now you're your mama. All right. Let's uh, talk to uh, Kayla. Quickly. Who's, uh, 14. Kayla. Yeah? You got on... Uh, Antibiotics for your acne? Yeah. Which one? Um, Minis no. Medicine? Menocycline. Menocycline, yeah. Yeah. And you're worried about the birth control pill? Yeah. Did you talk to the dermatologist about that? Uh -uh. Well, I got the birth control from Planned Parenthood, and then my doctor gave me the right. antibiotic. Okay, you got to talk to your doctor. Because the tetracyclines, which is what minocycline is, can screw up the birth control pill. So yeah. you need to discuss that with him or her. Okay. All right. And uh, Amber's been on hold for 90 minutes. Amber! Hey, what's up? Hey, who loves you, baby? We got to go to commercial. <laughs> oh, man. Boyfriend lives in another city, wants her to have phone sex. No, ah, he look. He doesn't live in another city. He lives here in Fresno, too. All right. And he wants to have phone sex and regular, real sex. Okay. Here's, here's the whole dealio. If uh, you don't feel comfortable doing it, then don't do it. You, don't have, you are in control. And you can say, okay, we'll have some phone sex, but no more regular sex. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. He'll quickly change his tone. Yeah. I don't know if they're having regular sex. Are oh. they having regular Let me just real quick. Real fast. 15, that's right. Amber, are you having regular sex? Um, yeah, I'm already sexually active. All right. Why did I pick that up? You on birth control? Yeah. There we go. All right. Now, look, whatever you want to do, do it. <laughs> if you don't, don't. Actually, whatever you want to do, don't do it. There you go. Whatever he wants you to do, don't do it. And we'll be back. Okay, so I know there's nothing wrong with me. So what's up? So I was like you, and I used to think that these datelines were totally cheesy. Why can't I meet anybody? But I tried everything else and thought, what the hell? So I called the dateline and actually met a cool guy. I called the dateline and I hooked up with some cool people. Believe it or not, other normal people are out there looking too. 877-889-DATE. 1-800-LOVE-191. We'll be right back. Everybody, I want to thank everybody and myself for coming in tonight. Yeah. So, until next time, this is Adam Corolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. What I I I I'm what I I I I'm what I I I I'm I I I I'm. This has been Loveline.
The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Ingold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.